What separates people who claim to be Christians from people who are really followers of Jesus Christ? That's the question that we're going to consider today as we think about the idea of daily Christian living. Our Lord said in Luke chapter 9, verse 23, If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Friend, what really separates those who faithfully follow Jesus from those who just name the name of Christ is the way we live our life every day. How do people act outside of the church assembly? How do they act when they're not around other Christians? How do we relate to people in the world every day? That's what Christianity is all about. And so we hope you'll stay tuned as we're going to think more about the idea of daily Christian living. To destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim the news unto the poor. The Gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the Gospel of Christ. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective Play Stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. What does it mean to live for Jesus Christ every day of our life? Well, as we mentioned, Jesus taught us that we've got to take up our cross and follow Him every day. But let's think about that verse in Luke chapter 9, verse number 23, and let's examine the different parts of that verse to really get an idea of what daily Christian living is all about. Here's what Jesus said. Notice Luke chapter 9, verse number 23. Jesus said, if any man desires to come after me or to follow me, let him deny himself Take up his cross daily and follow me. Friend, being a follower of Jesus is more than what you do on Sunday at worship or maybe Wednesday at Bible study. Being a real disciple of Christ means that we try every day 
to follow Jesus to the best of our ability. But notice the, notice the three things that Jesus said are necessary to follow him every day. Jesus said, if any man desires to come after me, friend, if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, you've got to want it. You've got to desire it. You've got to have that, that strong, overarching, overriding will that you want to do God's will. John 7, 17, Jesus said, anyone wants to do the will of the Father, he shall know concerning the doctrine. You've got to want to do God's will. The, the, the mindset of the Apostle Paul it's such a beautiful idea here. Acts chapter 9, when he is presented with the Lord by the Lord on the road to Damascus, Saul said, Lord, what would you have me to do? Friend, do you really want to do above everything else, above power, above pride, above pleasure, above self? Do we want to do God's will more than anything else in this life? What we're really asking is, do we really love the Lord like we ought to love him? Jesus said when asked by a lawyer in Mark chapter 12, verse 30, what's the, the first and the greatest commandment? Do you remember what Jesus said? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. This is the first commandment. Mark chapter 12, verse 30 following. God is love, and if we say we love God, we've got to follow his commands. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. And so it all starts with those words Jesus said. If anyone desires, do you have that, that desire to follow Jesus in your life? Then notice what Jesus said. The second component of daily Christian living is, if any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself. This is the hard part. Daily Christian living means that I am going to say no and deny self and put Christ out in the forefront. And friend, throughout the Bible, you read that that's the mentality Christians ought to have. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, to Christians in Rome, I beg you by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Listen to those words again. We're to present our bodies a living sacrifice every day. My life denies self, and I ask, how can I live for God today? Galatians 2 verse 20, probably Paul illustrated that so beautifully in his life when he said, I've been crucified with Christ. What do you mean you've been crucified with Christ? It's no longer I who live. Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul could truly say, I die daily. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 30, he crucified that old man and now his life was all about living for God. For to, to, to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Paul would say in Philippians chapter 1 verse number 21. And so maybe... In your former life, you used to be involved in fulfilling all kind of various pleasures or lusts of the flesh. Maybe you were involved in drunkenness. Maybe it was drugs. Maybe it was uh, sexual immorality. Maybe it was all about fulfilling the desires of the flesh. If I'm going to deny self, I've got to learn to say no to self. That that's not, God doesn't want me to walk around in drunkenness, Ephesians 5 verse 18. God doesn't want me involved in sexual immorality, 1 Corinthians 6 verses 19 and 20. It's not about fulfilling every desire that I can have. Maybe you used to talk in a certain way that wasn't what God wanted. Maybe you said those four-letter words that God doesn't want you to say. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, Colossians chapter 3, the Bible clearly teaches in Colossians 3, 8, that let no filthy communication come out of your mouth. And so maybe our speech 
wasn't what it used to be. And maybe that impulse sometimes is still there. I've got to learn to bring every thought into captivity unto the obedience of Christ. Maybe you weren't used to worshiping God faithfully. Maybe you've never done that. Or maybe you were used to putting other things first uh, on the Lord's day. We need to learn that part of living faithfully is I need to worship God faithfully. John 4, verse 24, Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 25. And so the first two aspects of daily Christian living is I've got to want it. I've got to have that desire. And then there's got to be a denial of self. But notice the third one. Jesus said, you've got to have a dedication to follow him. If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Friend, the idea of, of, of taking up the cross, the cross was sometimes looked at as a sign of shame. Sometimes when we think of the cross, we think of maybe some burden that a person has to bear. It represents Christianity and, and all that Jesus suffered and did and what we carry in this life. Jesus said, you've got to take up your cross every day and follow me. Friend, faithfully living for the Lord means that I'm going to do my best to follow Jesus every day. It's not about me. Remember, I'm not, it's not just what I want. I'm not the leader of everything, and I don't get to decide how things are done. I've already given my servitude to the Master and the Lord, Jesus Christ. Do you remember 1 Peter 2, verse number 21? Peter says, For to this were you called, because Christ also suffered and died for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his footsteps. That's what it means to be a Christian. Every day I'm trying to put my feet, my life, my pattern, in the pattern of Jesus Christ. Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Revelation chapter 14, there is this, this grand scene of all the redeemed and the question is asked, who are these? And here's the answer. These are they who follow the Lamb wheresoever he went. I love the example of Acts chapter 4 verse number 13. Peter and John have just boldly spoken to from the scriptures to the high priest and the Sadducees and the scribes there. They basically have rebuked the religious leaders of their day. And so these religious leaders are wondering, how is it that these untrained and uneducated men have basically schooled us in the law? And then, the Bible says, then they realized they had been with Jesus. Friend, that's what we're talking about. Do I have the mind of Christ? Is my thinking the way Christ wants me to think? Am I trying every day to make my life like his life? Is my speech and my actions and my morality and my desire to go to heaven the same mindset that the Lord and Savior had? And so do we have that desire? Are we willing to deny self? And do we have the dedication to follow Jesus each and every day. Now, for just a few moments, I want us to think about practically. What does it mean practically in my everyday life to have daily Christian living? What are some things that in the Bible people did every day as Christians and that I need to do every day? Let's take a moment to consider some things that the Scripture says are daily attributes of Christian living. Number one, daily Bible study. Acts chapter 17, verse 11 teaches us this. These, the Bereans, were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness, and listen now, and searched the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Here are Christians who are held up for us because they were involved in a daily searching and a daily studying of the scripture. Friend, I need that in my life, and you need that in your life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. How often do you eat? Well, you can't go long without eating, right? Most of us eat every day. Jesus said, it's not by food alone that you survive, but by every word from the mouth of God. 
You see, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. The heart of the righteous studies how to answer. Proverbs 15 verse number 28. Be ready always to give an answer for the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. 1 Peter 3 verse 15. And Christians are told, do not be ignorant, but understand the will of the Lord. Do you remember why that is so important? Friend, I, I want us to realize that our spiritual vitality, our spiritual survival depends upon and is based on God's Word. Think about what the psalmist said in Psalm 119, verses 10 through 12. Your Word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And remember how God's Word is, is like food to the soul. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 15, verse 16, your words were found, and I did eat them, and they were to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Jesus said again, we don't live by food alone. That's not what you survive by, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God in a dark, wicked, and sinful world that Satan is trying to sway so many people. Here's what we need. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, verse 105. And so the first attribute of daily Christian living, practically speaking, is we need to have daily Bible study. Then consider this idea. Another part of daily Christian living is daily evangelism. Notice Acts chapter 5, verse number 42. This is directly after Peter and John have been beaten for speaking in the name of Jesus. They did that great miracle in Acts chapter 3, healed the lame man. They spoke boldly and said in Acts chapter 4 to the leaders, nor is there salvation in any other name, for there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And then in Acts chapter 5, they don't know what to do with them. And so they take them, they beat them, they tell them no more speaking in the name of Jesus. And here's what the Bible says in Acts 5, 42. And daily in the temple and from house to house, they cease not teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Daily they taught about the Lord. Friend, the idea of evangelism is something that the Bible clearly teaches our Lord wants all of us to do. Remember the, the final request of Jesus before he went back to heaven? Go into all the world, preach the gospel unto every creature. Matthew 28, 18, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Paul said, Jesus we preach, warning every man, teaching every man, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And friend, that's not just an obligation, that's a privilege. We proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Those who were scattered in the first century went everywhere preaching the word. And friend, that's the same mindset and mentality that we need to have today. When I think about something I can do as a Christian, every day I need to look for open doors. I need to think about people in my life who I can impact with the gospel. I need to think about ways that I can find opportunities and, and look for good ways to share the message of hope and love and of God's salvation with a lost and dying world. All right, let's talk about a third attribute. We've got daily Bible study, daily evangelism mentioned in the scripture, and then the idea of daily prayer. Here's an attribute every Christian needs to make a top priority, and that is making prayer a part of our everyday life. Psalm 86 and verse 3, the psalmist said, I cry unto thee daily. Mark chapter 1 verse 35 says of Jesus, in the morning, a great while before daylight, Jesus departed, went to a solitary place, 
And there he prayed. We say, let's have the mindset. What would Jesus do? Let's have the pattern of Christ. Jesus got up early, got away from the hustle and bustle of life, and took time to start every day with prayer. Friend, if that isn't a powerful lesson about prayer, what is? 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, we are to pray without ceasing. As Christians, we have got to be more of a people of prayer. Luke 18, 1, Jesus said, men ought always to pray and never lose heart. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 16, the effect, or James 5, 16, the effect of fervent prayer of a righteous man overcomes much. And here's what the Bible says prayer does. We come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find grace and mercy to help in time of need. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 13 through 16. And so let's utilize prayer every day in our Christian life. But then, friend, think about this one. Here's another beautiful aspect of daily Christian living. The Bible identifies that we need to be looking for ways to exhort, encourage other people daily. And so daily encouragement is a part of that. Here's the verse. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, the Hebrew writer says, Take heed, beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest you be deceived through the, lest you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Friend, when we think about things I can do every day, we need to exhort and encourage one another daily. You think about uh, Barnabas. And do you remember what Barnabas was known as in the book of Acts? He was known as, at the end of Acts chapter 4, as the son of encouragement. Think about the encouragement people have given you in your life. Maybe when something, you weren't really good at something, but you were getting better. Or maybe when you were struggling with something, or maybe when you were down and out, and somebody came along and encouraged and, and spoke a good word to you and tried to lift you up. Friend, we need to think about people every day. Who can I encourage? Who can I help? Who can I try to build up a little bit? And, and who can we try to help walk and run the Christian race every day? And so daily exhortation, such a big part. Think of people who are hurting. People who are sick. People who are struggling with various difficulties. People who need that shot in the arm. And let's do something. Let's do something every day to try to encourage at least one person and help them uh, in the Christian race. And then there's another aspect of daily Christian living, and that is daily benevolence. Here's what the Bible says. Acts chapter 6, verse 1, the Bible says that the Hellenists, the Greek-speaking uh, widows, they were being neglected in the, listen to it, daily distribution. There was a, a, a program. There was some kind of effort among the first century church to make sure that their widows and the people who were suffering, were their physical needs were provided for. And friend, the Bible teaches that, right? Throughout the Bible, James 1.27, well, what's the essence of pure religion? Pure and undefiled religion before God the Father is this, to visit the widows and the orphans in their affliction and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. We need to ask ourselves, who's hurting? Who, who maybe doesn't have the food that they need to eat? Who doesn't have shelter? Who doesn't have clothing? From what separates real Christianity from those who just talk the talk is, are we willing to get our hands dirty? Are we willing to help? the poor? Are we willing to feed the hungry? Are we willing to aid those who are sick and, and afflicted? Think about the life of Jesus. Isn't that what he did? Those who were sick, Jesus healed them. Those who were hungry, Jesus fed them. Those who were poor, Jesus helped them. If I'm really going to be a Christian every day, I can't turn a blind eye to people who are hurting and sick and in need and not do something to help them. 
And so, friend, here's what we consider today. As I think about my life, as you think about your life, let's ask ourselves, do we really want, do we really have that desire? Do I want more than anything else to follow Jesus? Do I want it bad enough that I'll deny myself? Am I willing to say, no, you can't do that? You can't have that? That's not holy and that's not right and you can't participate in that? Will I say no to self to follow Jesus? And then will I be dedicated enough to take up my cross and follow him every day? And if so, will I make Bible study, prayer, evangelism, uh, benevolence, and all the good things that we talked about a part of my life? My friend, it isn't enough. Anybody can claim they're a Christian, right? Matthew 7, verse 21, Jesus said, It's not everybody that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Anybody can claim to be a Christian. Anybody can put on a, a suit and tie or a fine clothes and go to a worship assembly. But what separates those who just claim, who just mouth the words or claim the name of Jesus from those who are true followers, disciples of Jesus, is are we really willing to get our hands dirty? Will we do those things when nobody's looking, when no credit is given to anybody, when it just brings honor and glory to God? Will we live the Christian life? Friend, if you're not a child of God, we invite you today to become one. Do you believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? John 14, 6. Would you turn from a life of sin and repentance? Luke 13, 3. Would you acknowledge Jesus as Savior with your mouth and be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And if you are a child of God, we hope today's lesson will encourage us to be more faithful than ever. Join us next time as we study more from the Gospel of Christ. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, and downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the Gospel of Christ.